In this video, I'm going to give you a beginner's look at Android Studio. I'm going to show you the most important directories that you'll probably find yourself spending 95% of your time in. I'm going to show you how the directories are structured, the most common files that you're going to be writing code in. And essentially, this is going to be an overview of the file structure for Android Studio. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about the two main views that you'll be spending your time in, or most of your time in. The main view is the Android view right here. So you can access the different views by clicking this pull down. The Android view is more of a concise view. That's that's how I would think of it. So if I was to pull up the my Android projects folder, which is this folder right here, Android Studio Projects, and go to the project, which is the notes project, this is kind of all of the files that are associated with the project. And you'll notice that all it shows in the Android view is this, this app folder right here. So essentially the Android view just shows everything inside this app folder. And actually it's even a little bit more concise than that. You can see if I expand it, all I see is res, some generated Java files, the Java directory, and then the manifest. But if I look here, there's a little bit more. So if I go back, this is actually what's shown in the project view. So if I was to go up here, click on project, this is what's shown right here. So the project view shows everything. It's more of a, it's a more detailed view. It literally shows every single thing that's in your project. I usually don't like to have the project view selected because you don't really need to see all of this when you're developing. Typically the Android view is all you need because inside of the Java directory right here, if I expand the main package directory, so not the test, the Android test one, not the test one, the main package directory, which has no brackets, this is where all of your activities and your other packages are going to be that you use for development. Then inside of the res directory is where you have all your project resources. So you'll have all of your drawables. So these are like images that you might add to your, your project. Right now there's no images, just some basic stuff that comes by default when you create a new project. The layouts. So I have one activity, which is notes list activity. It has a layout named activity notes list associated with it. That's inside the layouts folder right here. So there's activity notes list. And you can see all it says is just a little text view saying hello world. This is the default layout that comes when you create a new project. The mip maps is sort of like drawables, but it's used for more specific tasks. So this is what's used for the icon, for example. So if you browse an app on your phone, you know that every app has a little icon associated with it. So the mipmaps are one of those uh, one of those resources. That's where the resource is kept. The values directory is some other kind of random resources that you would use in your project. Things like colors, if you want to click a quick reference to colors, you can use the hex code and code in a color. That way it's easy to reference different colors when you're styling your app. So I could create a new color, for example, I would just open a color tag and go, I don't know, say blue, and I could uh, look up a hex color code for blue. So I'm gonna open up an internet browser, just type hex color code and go to a chart. And I could just look up like a blue hex color code, sure I can copy that one, go back to Android Studio, and type that in. Now I have that blue color coded into my colors file and I can very easily reference that color in my layouts or my activities or whatever. I'm just gonna close some of these. The next is the strings file. So this is the same kind of thing as the colors file except it codes in strings. So I can create new strings. I can say, you know, Mitch's string and give it a name of this or give it some content of this is my string whatever, it doesn't matter. You can code in any strings here and then easily reference them in your activities or your layouts. And the last resource or file, sorry, in the values folder is styles. Styles is exactly what it sounds like. It's what's used for styling your application. So you can add things like the app theme, which defines the colors that are associated with your application. So for example, if I was just to run this app, don't worry if you don't know how to run apps yet or anything like that, I'm just gonna run it so I can show you. If I open the application, you can see that the theme colors match what we have here. So we have that kind of lighter blue here, which is in the toolbar. We have that darker blue, which is in the status bar. And this color, the accent color is used for other things, but there's nothing really in this app right now, so you can't really see any examples of that. But in general, it's just the overall theme color of the app. Moving out of the app folder, coming down, we have, actually here, I'll talk about the manifest first. So the manifest is, 
It's a unique class that's included in every project for defining some very high level properties. So you have like an application tag which defines properties for the entire application. You can see it's pointing to the theme which is referencing that style file that I, that I pointed out just a few seconds ago. We have some other options like setting the icon from the MIP map folder which we talked about, uh, setting the label which is the label that you see in the toolbar right here. So this is, that's uh, referencing the strings file that we talked about. See, it's referencing the app name string, which is this string right here, and uh, some other properties. These, these ones aren't important. I don't wanna to talk too much about them and get into detail. Then coming down, we have another kind of attribute inside of the application. This is the activity. Every activity that you have in your app needs to be registered in the manifest. So currently I have one activity, notes list activity. So because I have one activity, I need that activity in the manifest. If I was to create another activity, I would need to add another activity tag, just like that. And then I would enter in the name and enter it into the manifest. But I just have one, so this is fine for now. Okay, so now we're ready to come out of the app folder. As we go down, we have another directory known as Gradle scripts. The two files that you need to know about in Gradle scripts is the build.gradle project file and the build.gradle app file. You can see in the brackets, this one has the, the uh, description project and this one has the description app. The project file, you probably won't be spending very much time in. These are kind of the high level dependencies or properties that you set for the application. Most of the time, everything you need is already gonna be here, in here. So it references the location of certain repositories that you're gonna pull resources from. So you have the Google repository and the JCenter repository. Most of the time, like I said, you won't need to add anything to here. Only if you're using services like Google services or something like that, you need to add something here. Most of the things that you'll find yourself adding are gonna be in the app build.gradle file. So this one. These are some other properties that are associated with your app. They're not quite as high level as the project build.gradle file. They're kind of like a step down. So we have properties like the compile SDK version. That means which SDK version your project is going to compile to by default. The target SDK version. So this is the SDK version that you're building the app for, the primary SDK version. I'm using 28, which is the one that I have installed on my Android Studio. And then you have the min SDK version, which is the minimum SDK version possible for someone who's going to run your application. So whatever you set here, all the dependencies that you add to your project need to match this min SDK version. You won't be able to put any dependencies in here that are lower than or that require a version that's lower than this min SDK version. Most of this stuff you won't touch at all. The only thing that you'll probably find yourself editing is down here in this dependencies section because the Android SDK doesn't come with everything you need most of the time. Even to use something like a recycler view, you need to add an external dependency. And to give you an example, I'm actually going to add one. So suppose you wanted to add something called a recycler view. If you don't know what a recycler view is, it's basically just uh, a list of items. So if you want to display a list of items in your app, I recommend using a recycler view. But to use a recycler view, you need an external dependency. It's not included in the Android SDK. So what I want to do is go to the developer website and I want to look up the recycler view dependency. So there is the, the guide to use the recycler view. I can click on that. You can see it's referencing the developer website. If I scroll down, I have the dependency for that library. So if I copy this, go back to Android Studio, I just paste that in and then click sync. Now I can use recycler views in my project. I wanted to do an example of this because I'm gonna post this video on YouTube as a standalone video, not just part of my SQLite for Beginners course. So I wanted to do an example of actually adding a dependency because it's very important to know how to add dependencies. You're gonna find yourself using them all the time from different sources on GitHub, on the Android documentation, all over the place. Basically what this is is a way to add an external library to Android Studio to make your life easier as a developer. Because people have already coded these things up ahead of time, why not use the resources that people have already put in their hard work to develop? The last thing I wanna talk about is Gradle. As you saw when I entered this dependency, I had to sync the project using Gradle after I added it. So if I was to edit this file, notice I just, oh, it actually doesn't, uh, it used to actually, if you did any change to this file, including adding white space, it made you sync it again, but it doesn't look like it does that anymore. But if I remove the dependency, it does 
tell me that I need to sync this. It says Gradle files have changed since your last project sync. A project sync may be necessary for the IDE to work properly. So this is telling me that I need to let Gradle rebuild my project, which is what you always wanna do if you edit the build.gradle files. So now your question might be, what is Gradle? In a nutshell, Gradle is a build system whose job is to build the project. It puts everything together. Every time you run the app, Gradle builds the project and creates an APK that's uploaded to the device. The APK file is essentially the app. Actually, one last thing before I go, I just remembered something. I didn't talk about this generated Java directory right here. This is new with Android Studio 3.2. It didn't used to be here. So if you're running Android Studio 3.2 or newer, chances are you're going to see this directory. The Android team has added this directory because there's some libraries out there that act as code generators for convenience. Some examples of code generator libraries are the data binding library and the dagger2 library. In Android Studio 3.2, this folder just shows so that you get an idea of what these libraries are doing. It doesn't just seem like magic because before it, the files were still being generated, you just couldn't see them being generated or where they were being generated. Now you can actually see where they're being generated. So it's kind of to remove this sense of magic that people were having, having when they um, added these dependencies. So that's all this is. Chances are you will never go in here or as a beginner anyway, you won't go in here. So you can probably just ignore it. You won't be spending any time in there anyway. Okay, that's it for this video. It's a little long, but I wanted to give you sort of a pretty comprehensive view of Android Studio and getting to know it. And in the next video of this playlist, there's gonna be a link in the description of this video, I'm gonna show you how to test apps and how to get started with the Android emulator. So if you own a real device, I'm gonna show you how to run, it, run an app on that real device. If you don't own a real device, I'm gonna show you how to use a virtual device on your computer to run your apps.